Hello everybody. Welcome here. Today we are going to talk about occupational health. Occupational health is a very important and interesting topic and it is relevant for uh, almost all the members of the society because everybody is somehow engaged in some kind of work related situation and in this topic we talk about the work environment and health issues related to the work environment. So uh, I'm going to share my screen and this topic occupational health is primarily divided in six sections. Why do we need to talk about occupational health, defining occupational health, major issues related to occupational health, basic principles for successful occupational health system, factors and hazards that operate at the place of work, and measures for the promotion of health of workers. So the first section is, why do we need to talk about occupational health? Well, as we stated, it is a topic which is related to almost each and every individual because it is related with the work environment. Globally, there are more than 2.6 billion workers and the workforce is growing continuously. Approximately 75% of these workers are in developing countries where workplace hazards are more severe. Each year, there are as many as 250 million occupational injuries resulting in 330,000 fatalities. Each day in the United States, on an average, 15 workers die from an injury sustained at work. If one includes occupational illnesses, an estimated 1.1 million people worldwide die each year. Annually, an estimated 160 million new cases of work-related diseases occur worldwide. So these figures are enough to suggest that that occupational health, if we talk about health of the workers in this particular topic, is a worldwide issue and it concerns almost each of the individual who is in a working age group. Occupationally related illnesses can occur in many workplaces and not just in industrial workplaces. Very often people think that when we talk about occupational health, actually we are talking about industrial health. But no, not necessarily. Industrial workplaces are only one part of the workplaces because chemicals are very important when we talk about health of people because very often chemicals are possible cause of serious ailments or diseases like cancer, lungs disease, blood and bone disorders, loss of mental ability, central nervous system debilitation, infertility, etc. Then microbiological hazards coexist with humans and contribute to poor indoor air quality or present significant risk of infectious disease in animal handling, child care, nursing and hospital care or community services where accidental body fluid exchange can occur. Then industrial workplaces can also put physical and mental strains on the worker, for example, manual handling, noise, vibration, extremes of heat and cold, and exposure to both ionizing and non-ionizing radiations. Humans have no natural protection against extreme exposure to any of these. All these hazards contribute to make many workplaces potentially unhealthy. So keeping in mind these conditions, we need to talk about the occupational health. Now, how to define occupational health? Because the discussion so far has helped us to understand the magnitude 
or a spread of concerns related to occupational health, but how do we exactly define this? For this, we'll take support from a definition given by ILO and WHO. The joint ILO WHO Committee on Occupational Health in its first session held in 1950 defined occupational health by explaining its aims. So this definition is primarily related with aims of occupational health. Now what are those aims? There are four or five aims. Occupational health should aim at the promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical, mental, and social well-being of workers in all occupations. So the first component itself reflects the scope of occupational health. It says that it should aim at promotion and maintenance of highest degree of physical, mental, and social well-being of workers in all occupations. There are different types of occupation world over we are familiar with almost all of them and every occupation has a specific challenge related to that particular work environment. The prevention amongst workers of departure from health caused by their working condition. So when we talk about occupational health, we talk about promotion and maintenance of highest degree of health. Then we talk about prevention from departures related to work conditions and then protection of workers in their employment from risks resulting from factors adverse to health and placing and maintenance of the worker in an occupational environment adapted to his physiological and psychological capabilities. And to summarize, the adaptation of work to man and of each man to his job. So if we summarize the whole definition or the aim of occupational health, we can say that it primarily talks about the adaptation of work to man and of each man to his job. That means how a person is adapting to the overall work environment and how that environment is actually posing challenges to that particular individual who is working there. The main functions of WHO mandated in Article 2 of its constitution include promoting the improvement of working conditions and other aspects of environmental hygiene. So WHO talks about occupational health in the specific context of working condition of people and their environmental hygiene. Then if we want to see the latest position of WHO in the context of occupational health, here we can see uh, the website of WHO gives a specific information. WHO is implementing a global plan of action on workers' health. 2008 to 2017, endorsed by World Health Assembly in 2007. So this is a latest plan of action, which is available in the website of WHO also. Then we come to the other dimensions or aspects related to its definition. Now Tillman has defined occupational health as the maintenance of the individual's individual workers' state of well-being and freedom from occupationally related disease or injury. So two things are very obvious here. Maintenance of individual workers' state of well-being and freedom from occupationally related disease or injury. Then Park also talks about occupational health and Park basically relates the goal of preventive medicine and occupational health and says that the goal of the preventive medicine and occupational health is same. That is prevention of disease and maintenance of the highest degree of physical, mental and social well-being of workers in all occupations. A specific protection of workers 
early diagnosis and treatment, disability limitation and rehabilitation, etc. Therefore, occupational health is the application of preventive medicine in all places of employment. We have already understood, discussed preventive medicine. So we can relate our discussions on preventive medicine with this concept of occupational health. We can also relate our discussions on public health with this discussion on occupational health. Park further says that it was customary in the past to think of occupational health entirely in relation to factories and mines, hence the term industrial health or industrial hygiene were in vogue. That means in the earlier stages of uh, discussions related to occupational health, it was also identified as industrial health because generally the health of the workers were seen in the context of industries. But as of today, we know that that every work environment is having a specific kind of culture, a specific kind of environment, and it poses a specific kinds of health related challenges. Modern concepts of occupational health now include all types of employment, including mercantile and commercial enterprises, service trades, forestry and agriculture, and include the subjects of industrial hygiene, industrial disease, industrial accidents, industrial hazards, industrial rehabilitation, and occupational psychology. Occupational health in agriculture and ergonomics are relatively new concepts. And we do understand that, that the challenges related to work environment will keep on increasing because we know that because of increasing intervention related to technology, the work environment is getting extended. So the challenges are also increasing. Now, we come to next section, that is the major issues related to occupational health. So what are the major issues related to occupational health? There are several. Widoti has identified some of the important issues. We can talk about some of them. The health risks that workers take to earn a living. Now, every worker is trying to earn some kind of livelihood, is managing to have some kind of living. And in every context, there are some kind of health risk or health challenges. So all those health risks and challenges are something that we are interested in talking about when we talk about occupational health. Then the consequences to their families when workers become ill or injured. Now, the second important thing is this, that we are, when, 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 we, when we are talking about occupational health, we are not only talking about the persons who get affected directly because of those working conditions, but also because of these things, the members of the family of the workers get affected. And we also need to take into consideration those concerns then the, co the cost of providing benefits and wage replacement to workers who are injured. Then the cost of providing medical and rehabilitation care to injured workers, the hidden cost to healthcare system of illnesses that are not recognized as occupational, especially those that take a long time to develop, the loss of productivity that results from avoidable injuries and illnesses. So if you see these arguments, the concerns related to occupational health are not just related to or confined to the kind of injury or morbidities or even mortalities which are caused, but it also takes into consideration the larger impacts over the family or overall production system or the kind of compensation or the healthcare cost that it may incur. Now, we come to the next aspect, which is dealing with the basic principles for successful occupational health system. So when we are having so many types of challenges related to occupational health, then what kind of occupational health system needs to be developed? For this, we need to go by some of the principles and Video T has identified five basic principles, which are related to protection and prevention, adaptation, promotion and development, cure and rehabilitation, and primary health care. 
We have defined these principles briefly here. When we talk about protection and prevention, then there are several issues involved here. Some of these are included here. The core of occupational health activities is the principle of protection and prevention. And it includes so many things, some of which are identified here. Identification of hazardous exposures and factors causing overload or other adverse work condition. Then assessment of the distribution and levels of exposures, identification of exposed groups or individuals and sources of hazards. Then assessment of risk to health and safety from exposure or adverse conditions. Similarly, initiating, instituting, and advising on needs and means for preventive and control actions aimed at protecting workers' health and safety. That means when we talk about protection and prevention, we are actually interested in creating a specific environment which should keep the workers free from all those preventable causes of illness, morbidity, or even injury or mortality. Then we talk about adaptations. Adolescent and young workers, pregnant women, handicapped workers, aging workers, migrant workers, and workers with chronic disease may need adaptation of work, working methods, or work environment, including machinery and tools to their special needs and abilities. Because they have a specific concerns or vulnerability, so they need a specific kind of adaptation. If we make an environment suitable for their needs, then we can easily follow the issues which are mentioned in the first principle, that is protection and prevention. Then comes the third point, that is promotion and development. Optimally organized work can have a positive effect on workers' health and work ability. So if we take into consideration the promotive aspects of health or the promotive health, that means we need to organize the work environment in such a way that the health condition of people or worker remain optimum so that they should not become victim of the uh, adverse impacts of the environment. Then we talk about cure and rehabilitation because very often people do become sick element or do have the negative consequences. So once they have developed the negative consequences, the natural choice is to go for cure and rehabilitation. So this principle is talking about cure and rehabilitation in all such cases where people are already infected with disease, accidents, or any other kind of problem. And then we come to the Last part, that is the fifth principle, which is primary health care. In many countries, workers may not have access to anything but primary health care. In all countries, certain economic sectors such as agriculture, small scale enterprises, informal workers, home workers, and workers in remote and sparsely populated areas usually lack specialized occupational health services. So when they are not having a specific occupational health services, then they should get at least the good quality primary health care because if they have access to quality primary health care, they can have minimal loss due to occupational hazards. Now we come to the next section that is factors and hazards that operate at the place of work. So we do want to understand, we do need to understand that what are those specific conditions which create problems for the health of the people in their work environment or what are those factors. Now these factors can be identified in few categories, for example, physical factors, chemical factors, biological factor, psychosocial factor and occupational hazards of agriculture workers. Now, uh, I have explained some of these factors at length also. Park has mentioned the factors and hazards that operate at the place of work and uh, some of these are mentioned here. For example, noise. Noise is a health hazard in many industries. The effects of noise are temporary or permanent 
hearing loss, nervousness, fatigue, decreased efficiency. So very often people who work in those industries where there is some kind of sharp noises or loud noises, then this noise can adversely affect the physical and mental condition of people. Then ultraviolet radiations. Occupations in such places affect people's eyes, causing intense complications. Then heat and cold and light and radiations and vibrations. So all these factors are clustered as physical factors. Similarly, there are problems related to chemical factors. We all know about chemical industries. Uh, some of these conditions could be number of chemicals which cause dermatitis, then eczema, ulcers, and even cancers. Then toxic dust mainly cause several types of disease. And then there are several other complications related to skin or even respiration, which are caused because of those chemical factors. Similarly, there are biological factors like viral, bacterial, and parasitic agents, which may result from close contact with animals or their products, contaminated water, soil, or food. The occupational diseases in this category are tuberculosis, anthrax, and several other. And today, uh, these days, basically, the world is witnessing a global pandemic, which is a basically a virus or a kind of viral problem that we identify as COVID-19. That means these biological factors are also posing serious challenges. And this time, this pandemic has spread world over and it is creating challenges not only to the people who are exposed to those things in a specific situation. Rather, the spread of the virus is going beyond the specific work condition and it is posing challenges or problems to people all over the world. And then psychosocial factors, psychos psychological and behavioral changes, and then psychomatic ill health. Two different conditions can be associated with the psychosocial factors. We can take up several examples for example, uh, these days we see that uh, people have started working day and night. Uh, for example, uh, we have call centers where people work during the night shifts. Now, because of working in the night shifts, there are several psychological and psychosocial consequences come into existence. So all these factors basically create occupational hazards and are serious occupational health related challenges. Now we come to a next section and here we will talk about measures for the promotion of health of workers. So what kind of measures could be taken for promotion of health of workers? The ILO WHO Committee on Occupational Health recommended several measures for the health promotion of workers. Some specific measures applicable in India are given here. So ILO and WHO has suggested measures. These measures are applicable world over, including India. Some of these measures we can talk about in Indian context also. First is nutrition. We all know that Human bodies have immune system and this immune system are actually the results of several factors, but most important is a balanced diet and nutrition because lack of proper nutrition that is identified as malnourishment is itself a big challenge because it creates weak immune system. And under the Indian Factories Act, it is obligatory to provide a canteen when the number of employees exceed 250. The aim is to provide balanced diet or snacks at a reasonable cost under sanitary control. So when nutrition is a very important factor, how 
to address to the problem. The specific practice is to provide proper canteens in work environments, especially factories and other offices. So we know that in every office space and especially factories, there is a provision of canteen where people can take their meal timely and they can get uh, good food, quality food, nutritious food. Then second important intervention is in the context of communicable disease control. The industry should provide an excellent opportunity for early diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and rehabilitation. The communicable diseases of special importance in India are tuberculosis, typhoid, fever, malaria, venereal disease, etc. There should be an adequate immunization program against preventable communicable diseases. In work environment, people work in close proximity with each other. If one worker or one person is getting affected by a communicable disease, then he or she can infect several other people. And so there should be a specific provision related to control of the communicable disease. And we know that, that because of this COVID-19, which is a very infectious disease, communicable disease, there is a, a specific provision related to lockdown. So the main purpose of lockdown was to check the coming together of people at the places of work so that this communicable uh, this communication could be prevented or the spread can be controlled then comes the next thing that is environmental sanitation again in covid 19 situation we, we have understood the issues related to sanitation we have understood the importance of sanitizer Within the industrial establishment, there is the need for the prevention of spread of communicable disease by water, food, toilet, improper ventilation, temperature, lightning, etc. And so under these conditions, environmental sanitation is very important. Again, I would like to say that during this uh, COVID-19 situation, we have focused a lot on this environmental sanitation. Then comes the next important thing, which is health education. Basically, the most important intervention could be made through awareness generation and education. So health education is an important factor by which we can control the consequences or negative consequences of occupational health related hazards. Health education is a basic health need. It is an important, it is an important health promotional measure, health education in the industrial and factory setting should be envisaged at all levels, the management, the supervisory staff, the worker and the trade union leaders of the community. And similarly, we are aware of several measures related to women and children. We know that uh, women during their maternity experience get a specific leaves. This maternity leave, the provision of maternity leave is primarily meant to protect the child, the newborn baby or the un unborn baby and the mother from the hazards of the working environment. So uh, every woman who is about to deliver a child is getting is entitled for maternity leave but we need to remember or we also need to talk about the work environment related to the unorganized sector because we know that the provision of maternity maternity leave is largely confined to the people who are associated with the organized sector in the unorganized sector such provisions are at the minimal so the government has made uh, some provisions to provide those facilities to people or especially women who are working in unorganized sector. But those initiatives are actually uh, still very low or minimal. And then basic, basic health goods, uh, basically uh, I have talked about basic health goods in my book, uh, Sociology of Health. And uh, I think all of you have your uh, access to that particular book. So there I talked about several things, uh, for example, food, then safe drinking water, that is potable water, 
then sanitation etc as basic health goods we understand the importance of water we know about several water bond diseases if people are not getting proper safe drinking water then they may become victim of several types of diseases so even if person is not there in a, a specific work environment but because of uh, some kind of impurity or some kind of uh, unhygienic drinking water they may become victim of these types of problems so all these things are required for promotion of health of the workers so this was the last slide related to occupational health in our discussion today there are several other things which we need to know which we need to talk about uh, i think uh, some of the references i have given in this presentation and there are several other discussion and references mentioned in this book so anybody who is interested in having further understanding and insight can go through that or for that matter any other book uh, we can close our discussion today by summarizing the important points mentioned here we talked about the magnitude of the problem we talked about how to define occupational health we talked about the factors related to occupational health and we can conclude that that in the society the government as well as people need to take appropriate step appropriate initiatives so that our overall overall environment could be could become safe and the work environment could become safe so that people should not become victim of work related disease or occupational disease because those who are getting affected by this are not only among those who are victims of this when a person is becoming sick or when a person is getting injured or when a person is witnessing premature mortality then the whole family is getting adversely affected and the whole society is getting affected so it's great time to think of occupational health and create an environment which should naturally provide more protection to workers thank you very much i'm going to close take care